Um, so let's just go through some of the evidence um, bit by bit. Obviously, we can't cover the whole thing, but um, as I said, we're very keen on, e on exercise. Some doctors still say there's no evidence that exercise helps people, and you, know, you don't tell patients who've got cancer to exercise. They're already burdened enough by all the toxicities. And there's, uh, but that's not true. I mean, th this BMJ, we've all heard of the BMJ, one of the best cancer journals, sh showed quite clearly that, that uh, there's 33 randomized controlled trials. Now, these are trials of the best quality. You know, they're, they're, they're convincing. Where people were put into a, a, a formal exercise program versus a standard of care. And there was absolutely no doubt that if you exercise regularly after cancer, even during chemotherapy if possible, but particularly after chemotherapy, you have reduced fatigue and tiredness, your mood, anxiety, and depression are improved. It doesn't mean they're resolved, but they're improved. Uh, you're able to perform activities of daily living, and your quality of life um, improves. I treat prostate cancer, and um, one of the things we are um, concerned about is when you give androgen deprivation therapy, you reduce the male hormones, there's an increased risk of heart attacks, uh, that you get overweight, you get mood changes, osteoporosis. And there's a number of randomized trials that show if you put people into an exercise program, you, do, you get less of those side effects. So for the last five years in our center, if you start Zolodex, you also get a prescription for the gym. So there's in both hands. And, uh, and it works. Uh, a lot of lobbying through Macmillan, we managed to get that into the NH, into the um, prostate cancer guidelines for last year. So this is actually now NHS law. If you don't refer someone to the gym when you start Zolodex, you will get fined. So, uh, you know, that's the only way to convince doctors to do anything, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, so that, you know, and, and now, now everyone else is struggling to find exercise programs. You, you probably have an exercise program. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, we've just started quite recently an eight-week um, course Brilliant. for our gentlemen living with prostate cancer, Good. which exercise is very much yeah. a key part of it. Yeah, so instead of being just a sort of, you know, a little thing added onto the side, now you're an essential requirement, otherwise they'll get fined, which is always works better. So next one, please. Um, other importance of uh, exercise, osteoporosis. Lots of things cause osteoporosis after cancer, premature me menopause and everything. I like this slide um, because this is a randomization of people who were already on a bisphosphonate. Does anyone know what bisphosphonates are? They're, they're bone-hardening drugs to improve osteoporosis. Now, many doctors, including ones I work with, say, well, I've started calcium and vitamin D, I've started a bisphosphonate, so, you know, my job's done. But actually, this was then a randomization of people who then were put into an exercise program. And there was a further significant benefit on bone health over and above the bisphosphonates, calcium, vitamin D. So it's not enough to write a prescription and just send patients packing. You need to write a prescription and refer people to an exercise program. And actually, there may be more sinister consequences of having osteoporosis, certainly after breast cancer. This was a study from ASCO year before last which a study of over 7,500 people, which showed those women with osteoporosis who were untreated actually had a worse survival. So it actually affects the body. It's not just that you might you know, break your hip or your, your wrist. You actually have a higher chance of your cancer coming back. So it alters the whole constitution of the body if you're not being treated. Osteoporosis is not such a bad thing as long as you have the treatment. And it's not just about exercise, of course. Uh, it's important to, to have a high vitamin D diet with lots of fish oils, green fleshy vegetables, etc. And interestingly enough, osteoporosis is protected from uh, protein from plant sources, not animal sources. Many people believe that you know a big steak will help your bones. It's not actually. It's a bowl of soya and lentils. And obviously, you stop smoking. It's the only thing, actually, being overweight helps your bones. But... Uh, I wouldn't encourage that. This is a study we did at uh, Cambridge. Um, we linked this to the Royal Marsden, a chap called um, and Gervais. Do you ever send any patients to Gervais for rectal mm. toxicity? What we did, we got all the patients who had prostate cancer who received radiotherapy over the last 10 years, and then we looked at their lifestyle, and we asked them if they exercised, smoked, if they were overweight, and a few other things. And then we sort of so we collected the lifestyle and rectal to um, pelvic toxicities, and we sent that to Cranfield University, and the statistician crunched it all together. And this was the results. It showed that if you were overweight, you had a slightly higher risk of rectal toxicity. If you were old, it didn't matter, which is good. So it shows you shouldn't be ageist with cancer treatment because uh, the toxicity is irrelevant. Smokers, of course, did worse. If you didn't exercise, 
you had the highest chance of pelvic tos toxicity. So exercise, which was previously unreported, and we won a medal for this study in the, from the Royal College, actually, it's quite nice, um, showed that it's... It, and, and how many people given radiotherapy are told to exercise at the same time? Probably none. So, uh, and it was the biggest factor, <coughs> whether you've got side effects <coughs> or not. So what we say to patients now, if you, if you were... So including erectile dysfunction. So if you want, to if you want more um, fun in the bedroom after radiotherapy, you need to buy a pair of training shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but exercise is not only about toxicity, there's a lot of studies now for breast, colorectal, ovary, um, um, uh, prostate, uh, which show that if you, um, if you actually exercise up to three hours a week, you have a lower risk of your cancer relapsing. And if you put it in perspective, this was a very large uh, Australian study about for bowel cancer. It showed a 14% difference in relapse rate. Now, I give chemotherapy to patients with colorectal cancer with a 9% benefit of reduction in relapse. So uh, exercise is almost twice the benefit of chemotherapy. And I'm not saying you wouldn't have chemotherapy, mm -hmm. but as well as. Uh, so, and there's, I mean, there's literally about 50 trials like this. So what uh, Maggie's and Macmillan are doing is obviously trying to develop exercise program. And the message is about three hours a week of something which is more than you're used to. I know if you're in a wheelchair, it's hard. Uh, but, um, you know, something which gets your heart and, and lungs a bit, a bit active. <coughs>